Hi everyone, you are now tuning in to another episode of Vonti Talks with Filmmakers Podcast. Our special guest is Key Grip in the Camera and Electrical Department, Patrick Heffernan. We hope you enjoy part one of this two-part discussion. Thank you for joining us today. We are here with Conversation with Filmmakers um, Podcast. And today our guest is Patrick Heffernan a key grip in the camera and electrical department. He's worked on a few projects that you may or may not know. Let's see, the action flick, Faster, starring The Rock, Bliss with Salma Hayek and Owen Wilson, one of my favorites, Hotel Artemis, You, Workaholics, and so many more. Have you seen Hotel Artemis? Of course I have. Yeah. What do you mean? That's a great movie. I, I I don't think as many people have seen it, but I, I think it's a great movie. Oh, you were so surprised, Patrick. I am a movie watcher. There's right. a lot of things I've seen. It's too many of them. It's Jodie Foster's comes... comeback movie. Huh? Jodie Foster's comeback movie. Exactly. But yeah. it's funny, though, that every time those lists come out with, like, have you seen those films? And there's be, like, the action version or the horror version or what. And it could be like 500 movies. I'm all like, let me see, 425 movies. <laughs> so no, that was um, a really great film. But Patrick, thank you so much for joining us today. My pleasure. I love it. This guy is so down to earth. He's very knowledgeable and he has a storied history about the filmmaking business. Now, for those that may not know what the heck a key grip is, break it down and how did you get into being that role as a key grip? Um, a, a key grip uh, basically is uh, part of the lighting team uh, and is involved in camera support. Uh, we're in charge of shaping the light. We're in charge of all camera motion, cranes, dollies, what have you. Uh, and camera support. And we're also kind of in charge of, it's one of those things where it's like, if no one knows how to do it on the film set, uh, it usually drifts towards us to figure out how to do something. So we'll help art department, we'll help everybody else try and figure out how to, you know, do the things that are out of the ordinary. So we're kind of a utilitarian kind of uh, department. Um, and so I got into it. Uh, I went to college for psychology, um, uh, and, uh, went for four years, but did not graduate. And I was, uh, you know, living at my parents' house, working at a video store and as a waiter and my brother called me and he says, I'll offer you uh, a dollar to work for six weeks on a film. Uh, and what? so I went and uh, I, I, I worked on the, the, the first film of a comedy group called Broken Lizard that some viewers may know mm -hmm. um, and absolutely fell in love with it. Uh, and it was it was amazing. And then I had the opportunity to move to New York City from that movie. Uh, and the producer's wife was working on a kid's television show called Blue's Clues. Hey. Uh, and so they got me a job on Blue's Clues, and then that kind of allowed me to progress to begin in the industry. So, so I want to know, Patrick, did he really just pay you a dollar for those six weeks, or did he actually? He did. He did. And I, I had the check, and I didn't cash it, so I would screw up their banking. <laughs> but I literally got a check. because They had to, for liability's sake, they had to pay me the one dollar. Oh, my goodness. Oh my god. So while while I lived in New York City, I had I don't know where it is now. It was, it was 27 years ago. Um, but I, I had the check on my wall, you know, Patrick Heffernan from Broken Lizard, one dollar. <laughs> that is so crazy. And how was how fun was it to work on that project? It was, was it was a lot of fun. Um, you know, they were family. Uh, my brother is in the industry and you know, you can have an argument about nepotism and whatever. There's a lot of that going on, equal babies and that kind of stuff. Um, <laughs> but, you know, my brother brought me out of a very difficult time in my life and he gave me a career path. Uh, and and it was amazing. And I saw the opportunity and I had the drive and the gumption to go for it uh, and to, to, to really put 100% into it. Uh, and it gave me, you know, the experience of the world. I mean, you know, I've traveled to Uruguay. I've traveled to 
Spain. I've been to Alaska for five months. I've been to yeah. Hawaii. Uh, I've been to Mexico, all based on the opportunity that I was presented and I took and I ran with. That um, is amazing. Yeah. And I seem to be okay at it. So no one, ah. you know, although I have been fired, but if you haven't been fired in this industry, then you're failing. Oh, yes. I was like yelled at, I think by, was it, I don't know if it was the cinematographer or what, but then all the camera guys came up to me and was like, Bonte, he's been yelling at everybody and cursing them out. It's okay. Yeah. <laughs> you, you have to have a very thick skin in this industry uh, because- uh, it's it's one of the things where it's like you you are working in a very large group of people in a very intense situation. I mean, it's not brain surgery, but there's a lot of pressure there, and people uh, certain people are more affected by that pressure than others. Mm -hmm. uh, and so you have to just kind of take it for what it is, and you're just, whatever, man. It's fine. Yell away. Yeah, yellow way, especially all for New Yorkers. It's like that will roll off our backs. We can curse each other out and then it's going to roll off our backs. We'll probably be like, want to go for a drink later? <laughs> well, I, I had to I had to kind of curtail the New Yorker in me when I moved to L.A. Um, because I, I very quickly found that the L.A. vibe of work industry is much different from New York City. Uh, and I was a little too crass and upfront yes uh new york city someone will walk up to you and stab you in the heart and just do it in la they'll like smile at you and tell you how great you are and stab you in the back yes you know? so it, thank you for like, saying it yeah one of those kind of things and that's not a fault i mean it's just it is a different culture it's just um, a different culture and it's like yeah. there's a passive aggressive style and then there is a there's a front to your face like, yeah I don't, I don't fucking like you, uh, but I will do my job with you. Great. I don't like you either. I don't care, but let's do our job. Yeah. Uh, and That's it's, it, yeah, it's, it's palpable. And it's, it's, it, it was something I had to really kind of put off to the side. It's funny. We did a movie recently called Quasi uh, mm -hmm. and the DP came out and he was from New York city. And my whole crew was like, Jesus Christ, your New Yorkers are really coming out with this guy. And it was like, cause he and I had, a great connection and, and it was just like you drop all of the bullshit and you just say shut up and go fucking do that you know <laughs> it, was, it was really really wonderful hey you guys this episode will not be for kids thank you so much no it that will not disclaimer. <laughs> yeah. no but it's so true though and another funny thing is when new yorkers see each other anywhere around the world we are going to be the loudest comparing yeah. boroughs yelling at each other like so yeah. excited to see each other where and you, you know i mean there's such there's that there's that connection and and you're so rooted into you know my wife always complains that you know i i grew up in new york city in the east village and every time we go to new york city we always gravitate towards the east village like can we go somewhere else it's like i really like the east village <laughs> <laughs> Uh, listen. Yeah. <laughs> well, I love that, guys. We are joined here with um, Patrick Heffernan uh, with conversations with filmmakers. We're going to take a quick commercial break, um, and we'll so we can hear from our sponsors. Sponsored by Oval Team. And now a word from one of our sponsors. After starting my podcast, I needed to hire the pros to market the content. Are you looking for digital success? Look no further. World Boss HQ is your strategic partner. Their experts turn your vision into a digital masterpiece. From stunning websites to powerful marketing, they've got you covered. Startups or established businesses, they are your one-stop solution. Visit worldbosshq.com. That is W-O-R-L-D-B-O-S-S-H-Q.com. And unleash your potential today. World Boss HQ Digital Marketing. Your online empire awaits. We are excited to bring you this world exclusive teaser from Bad Rabbit Pictures and Movie Pods. They are presenting Age of Prophecy, a sci fi fantasy podcast done in the style of the radio dramas of yesteryear. Coming soon to all streaming platforms. Visit www.moviepods.com or www.thenuke.com. 
Chronicle.com for all the release dates. You won't want to miss this one. Your myths were born from our history. Let's check it out. Life. A vile, messy sequence of events before we die. All designed for something beyond us. It has to be. Or else, what's the point? You don't know me, but I know you. I am responsible for your triumphs and miseries. Zira and Lilzor, and to truly understand your own story, you must know mine. Your myths were born from my history. Hi there, and welcome back to Conversations with Filmmakers podcast. We are back, you guys. You are listening in to Conversations with Filmmakers. We have Patrick Heffernan, who is a key grip in the industry. Now, you kind of, when you first described your job, you just like bulldoze through it, right? But yeah. I want you to go a deeper dive for that audience. This is like educational for somebody that wants to aspire to do what you do you mentioned like the cranes and all of that stuff tell us about some of the equipment you work on what kind of so why don't we why don't we start with um like let's say a lighting setup Mm -hmm. okay so um you sit there and you go through with the director and the actors and you're watching where they're going to go and all this kind of stuff uh and the rehearsal finishes and then we have a conversation with the dp myself and the gaffer Mm -hmm. and it's like okay um such and such is going to be standing at the desk and and Mm -hmm. then that person is going to walk over to the window and we're going to walk some to the window and you know all that kind of stuff so what we'll do as the key grip we'll figure out what lights you're going to go where uh and then we'll figure out which stands the lights go on uh, we'll put the light on coming in through the window. Uh, my department will be in charge of making sure that, okay, the, the light can't go high enough and I don't want light in her face. So we'll shape the light. We'll put what we call a topper on it. We'll bring the light, uh, you know, a, a fabric on a top to kind of soften the face. Mm-hmm. We'll take, we'll shape the light off of the background so it's not spilling all everywhere. So we, we kind of, in that aspect, we'll be in charge of kind of focusing the light in one area. The, the electric department will put the light up and we'll kind of shape it to the demands of what the scene dictates. Mm-hmm. Uh, while we're doing that, our dolly grips uh, will be in charge of working with the camera department uh, and they will be uh, trying to figure out where the shots are. At points, we'll lay dolly track down or what we call planks uh, mm-hmm. to get the camera from A to B, land yeah. at this spot. And then when the actor moves back, we'll kind of drift back in the other way. So the dolly grips are in charge of dealing with those things. Um, Additionally, we'll be most likely helping out with art department. Um, You know, when the camera goes over here, I'd love to have that face in the shot a little bit more. So we'll put some boxes underneath that to kind of elevate it a little bit. So it's Mm -hmm. just in frame in the foreground or in the background or what have you. Um, You know, when she sits in her chair, sometimes the chair moves. So we'll have Mm -hmm. to put sandbags on that chair. So the chair is always in the same spot. Yes, that, that's kind of the 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 basic thing for a lighting setup of the of the set. Uh, but then we'll also have a rigging crew, yes. and what the rigging crew. So, for example, if we're shooting on a sound stage, the rigging crew will come in earlier before us, and outside that window, there'll be a backing or what we call trans light, which is basically a vinyl print of a building or a blue yes. screen, whatever. They'll hang that for us and pre light it. 
put chain motors up and do all that kind of stuff. Uh, just so when I walk in on sets, I don't have to worry about that minutia. And then we can just start shooting within an hour. That is How's so that? that's so dope. And that is more of a description. But I thought it was really cool um, when I was working over at Sony. We used to watch the painters of those yeah. back, those back sets. It was so dope because it would be like floor to ceiling they'd be on a ladder and they're just like painting yeah. out the landscape of whatever it was that yeah. you um needed them to do so yeah. when you did that first job um you were pretty much a pa with your brother that time i was the grip intern so i was yeah, specifically intern. put in with with um the grip and electric department i mean there was one gaffer one key grip me and another uh, 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 Jendra was her name. She's a DP now, uh, out of New York city. Um, and so that was how we started. And then I kind of fell into it as I migrated to the, the world of New York city, mm -hmm. I started meeting people here and there. And then, um, I, I started getting more jobs. I fell into the community, which at first seems very vast and amazing. Uh, and then you realize it's actually very incestuous uh to a fault at points and uh you know you you develop your community and your friends and you kind of go through the rank and file of it and you know you're in the front lines at certain times you know working mm -hmm. in new york city uh in december at nights where you don't even want to go inside to eat lunch because you don't want to thaw out you just want to stay cold because it's going to be harder if you get warm uh mm. and so you go through all those things and then um, I started to realize that I kind of wanted to be in charge. There was a, one scenario where we were on a job and the key grip kind of was a younger guy and he kind of, you know, lost his shit a little bit and, and got mad at the DP and left. And so I just inherently took over just to kind of finish the day. Yeah. And I realized that maybe I kind of have the ability to take charge of this scenario and mm -hmm. to be a grip. Um, and so then I kind of made it my point of, you know, it, I was like, I made a decision. I was like, okay, if I'm going to be a key grip, I don't want to, I want to know every aspect of what it is to be in the grip department before I became the boss. And yeah. so I took a couple of years and I kind of, uh, made it my goal to learn every day. I wanted to be a dolly grip. I wanted to be a rigging key. I wanted to be a best boy. You know, I did every single job that I could to make sure I understood what it took so when I was became the boss, I knew what what the job was, um, and what was required of each department uh, and position in the department. Um, and so it took a little while, but eventually I started uh, I started doing it. Um, and then I eventually uh, worked on a sh and and it's one of those things where it's like you never know how you're going to get your next job, so you can never really blow anyone off because yeah, you just don't know. And so I was in I was in New York City and I was working on a freebie for a friend of mine. Um, he Doing was these dollar things and freebies and <laughs> I, I know I know it's so ridiculous. Uh, but we were, I was working for this freebie for a friend of mine. Um, I I just been through a very emotional breakup of my life and I was at a kind of a, a turn. I didn't know what what, what was going to happen next. Um, and. Uh, two days after, I get a call from a guy who works on that freebie with me. And he's like, hey, I'm doing this movie. Um, we need a key grip. I would really like you to do it. Mm -hmm. I was like, sure. What is it? And he's like, it's a movie called Into the Wild. Uh, and it's uh, directed by Sean Penn. I was like, what? what? <laughs> yeah, you're like, <laughs> are you man, fucking I'm kidding me? You know, and uh, it was around my birthday and I was out with my friend who I did the, the freebie with and we yeah. had been drinking and having a good time. And I got a call from the producers and they're like, um, hey, we heard that you might be interested. And I was like, fuck, yeah, I'm interested. And he's like, oh, I like your enthusiasm. And I was like, oh, sorry, we've been drinking a little bit. Uh, it's my birthday. He's like, oh, happy birthday. And he's like, hey, can you be on a plane in four days uh, to come to L.A.? I was like, uh, yeah. And he's like, uh, and then we're going to probably fly you from here to Alaska for a couple of weeks. I was like, okay. Yeah. You know, so I, it became this scenario. And again, it's, it's you, a lot of times in this industry, and especially as, as a, as a key grip, 
you have to have the confidence that you can do what you need to do. Mm-hmm. Um, and even though a lot of times you've never done it before. Yes. Uh, and so never you tell have... them that. Well, there's the point. Uh, because I went, uh, so I, I, they flew me to Alaska, uh, and it was this, this very crazy moment. I was like, I'm from New York City. I'm not an outdoors person. I now have to present myself as an outdoors person. I was like, okay. Uh, I land and I, I get in uh, the car. I go to my hotel. They hand me a cell phone. I was like, this is my cell phone? This is amazing. And they're like, if anyone calls that phone, you have to answer. I was like, okay, great. I'll be, you know. Uh, and then the phone rang. And I was like, uh, hello? And they're like, we need you up in the mountain right now. I was like, okay. Uh, and I well, just got off the airplane from New York City. And so they drive me to the end of a road. It's in, it's in winter. Uh, and the road stops, and I have to walk over a berm of snow, and there are eight snowmobiles. And I'm sitting there, I was like, Jesus Christ, what is going on? And like, All right, <laughs> is the helicopter oh, coming next? Yeah, put him on the front one. We need Pat to get up there right now. I was like, oh, my God, okay. And they put me in the front one. I get up there, and we're walking around, and there's Sean Penn, who is a character. I mean, he's got this uh, this persona that you're just like, you have, you're in awe. You're like, holy shit, yeah. that's fucking Sean Penn. <laughs> uh, and I'm sitting there and he walks up. He's like, are you Patrick? I was like, yeah. He's like, I have a question for you. I was like, yeah. He's like, if I wanted to build a crane in the back of that bus and then move it over there, how long would it take? I was like, 45 minutes. He's like, okay. And he walked away. Uh, <laughs> and then I went to my best boy. I was like, what crane is it? I don't even know what the crane is. <laughs> you know? Uh, and so at that point, we, we had figured out what the crane would be, and I'd never used that crane. So oh, no. during, during prep, I was like, okay, so we went down uh, during prep, and every day we built that crane three times. Put it in the truck, build it, break it down, put it in the truck, build it, break it down, just so when the time came, we knew it would take less than 45 minutes. So it's just one of those things where it's like, you can fake it, uh, but you got to be able to back it up when it comes down to it. When it comes down to it, and you were like, oh yeah, yeah. 45 minutes. Now, an exciting message from our sponsors. When I decided to launch this podcast, I had the tools to find talent and market the show, but needed a skilled editor to bring it all to life. That's when I turned to Jacob Daly at redhawk.uk. His collaborative approach and swift revisions transformed my vision into reality. Redhawk.uk, your one-stop solution for creative content services. Reach out to them. Now a word from another of our supporting sponsors, that is Realm IQ, a new AI consultancy started by film marketing veteran, Kurt Doty, who has built an international team of AI mentors to help AI change management for your business. Go to www.curtdoty.co slash Realm IQ, smart people for smart adoption, creating smart worlds. Realm IQ, book your AI workshop today, adopt or perish. Hi there, and welcome back to Conversations with Filmmakers podcast. Because you had not maybe experienced that crane particularly, but you've right. worked with cranes before. It would have been different if- like, I really hadn't at that time. Because, really? Yeah, because- Oh, uh, you're in crazy. New York, in New York City, uh, I, I was uh, much younger in the industry. And at the time to get into the New York City Union, it was very complicated uh, because they didn't want new membership and all that. They were letting me key very low budget non-union union jobs Mm-hmm. But they didn't want us in the industry, uh, in their union themselves. So I was a non-union guy. So I never got to use these tools. And it's like, once I found out what the crane was, it's going on, you know, and they're, they're, I was going going through books and researching it and like, how far can a crane reach and all that kind of stuff. And so uh, a, lo- a lot of it was very first. And, and I, you know, a lot of times I joke with, I didn't really figure out who I was till that movie. Uh, and I was 33 at the time, uh, but there was a lot of things that happened in those nine months of my life, uh, some near-death experiences, uh, just from what's going on. And then I kind of came to a point where it's like, I became very comfortable with who I was. Uh, 
mm -hmm. uh, and from that experience. It's like going to war. It's like, I survived this. It, it, you as a producer on reshoots for a Dwayne Johnson movie talking about over budget, I, like, I don't give a shit. <laughs> like, <laughs> what, what, what do you want me to do? You can tell me no, and that's fine. And we won't do it. But if you're going to ask me, well, my opinion is I'm going to say yes. You know, and it, it, it takes a little bit of time to get there and to get the confidence um, because it so is that the, was again, a moment that was a moment that you would say you went from aspiring to professional filmmaker. I would say, yes, I, I find the term professional filmmaker to be a little weird, um, but I would say that I went from someone who didn't have the experience and who was kind of faking it to uh, somebody who understood what was required of the job description mm -hmm. and was able to take responsibility for it. Because mm -hmm. one of the things that I, I learned very early on and I got very nervous when I was in New York City, I had this crew with me and I was like, my God, how am I ever gonna work without this crew? Because I trust them so much and everybody has their own responsibilities. Yes. And then as I started traveling through the world and, and, and there were times where I would be like in Uruguay and it's just me and nobody else. And the key grip that I'm working with doesn't even speak English. And I have to try and convey these things. Yes. And, you know, you realize that, uh, you know, usually before you start a project, you get a little nervous beforehand going in, which is healthy. Um, but you realize it's, it's not just you. It's, it's you have, have people that are there that are going to support you. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's why when I come to LA, like the, the thing about grips is they're going to bitch no matter what. They're going to bitch about we're working too long. They're going to bitch about we're not working long enough. Yeah. Uh, you know, the pay sucks. I'm not getting paid. You know, they're always going to have something to complain about. So you just kind of turn a deaf ear to that. Um, <laughs> but, deaf ear, really? Yeah. But, you know, you're, but in the end, you, you kind of cultivate your crew into who has the merit. And, and who has the ability to do what you need them to do. Um, and wow. you're, you're never alone. Uh, and that's, that's what's taken me a long time to, to really get all of the crew with the dolly grips and the rigging keys and all that. But I feel like I've successfully kind of gotten there at this point. And it's become a, a thing where it's not, there's no anxiety, but there's a joy about going to work. Yes. Because you're working with... Um, your associates, your friends, it's, you know, and, and it's a project and, and you as the key are in charge of driving it into being uh, a project that you take pride in no matter what it is. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of the su support people are, just, it's just a job, but you've got to bring them into the fact that like, I give a shit about this. So yeah. if you don't want to give a shit, then you can get out of here. Mm -hmm. And I think that's one of the more important things to kind of deal with, because when you deal with technicians, we're technicians. And that's that's really what it is. We're, you know, we're mechanics, we're whatever. Uh, and so we're we're dealing with the, the details and the, the logistics of it. Uh, and it's not always necessarily creative. You know, we're not the productions that are trying to figure out what goes where or that, you know. So it's mm -hmm. it's it's a complicated scenario, but it really is quite awesome. And, you know, it's a collaborative thing. I love that. I was hey, a little guys. bit rambly. I was a little bit rambly, but, you know, no, I'll, let your editor, I'll let your editor go through it. Uh, uh, my editor, listen, Jacob Daly, make sure you keep that whole conversation in there. Don't listen to this, man. This is my show. Thank you. Mm. But um, this is Patrick Heffernan is here with us. You're listening to Conversations with Filmmakers. You've just tuned into an episode of Conversations with Filmmakers podcast. We'd like to thank our guests for joining us and sharing their knowledge. This has been a production of Vonti Pictures, hosted by me, Vonti McRae, a screenwriter and producer. We'd also like to thank Bad Rabbit Pictures for the animated content and creator of upcoming podcast, Age of Prophecy along with our sponsor, RedHawk.uk, with all episodes being edited by Jacob Daly, director, producer, and a man of many talents. Come back next week as this saga continues for the Conversations with Filmmakers podcast. <laughs>